Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm Felix and this is my 2020 Renault Clio uh, 1.3 TCE S edition in urban grey. Um, in this video I'm just going to do a little update, a little sort of follow-up to my previous video where I showed you around the car. If you haven't seen that video I'll put a little, uh, little pop-out banner there so you can have a, have a look at that one. Um, but I've done about 930 miles or say 1500 kilometres in the car now and I thought I would just give you a little update tell you about the car sort of if any of my opinions have changed that sort of thing and uh, you know give you a little sort of another look around and tell you some sort of nuances and a little bit little quirks about the car um, I can tell you the first thing I really like about the car is the color I still love the color there it is in some quite strong sunlight you can see the car's pretty dirty it's here in that here it's winter here in the UK and the urban gray color really shows the uh, or hides the dirt really really well so I'm very much happy about that here's one thing I don't like you can see the car doing it straight away as always first thing I don't really like is the the presence detection key on this where you sort of walk away from the car and it automatically locks it's very very sensitive so if you can see I'm like I don't know maybe one and a half meters away from the car and it keeps locking and unlocking that's sort of pretty annoying you can disable it in the uh, in the settings menu I haven't um, but yeah it's something which you sort of wants something to look out for let's get in and continue. Okay. So here we are, Renault Clio 5. Um, I just want to preface this video by saying, on the whole, I'm extremely, extremely happy with this car. I think it is a really, really, really excellent car for the money and represents sort of tremendous value for money in the, the cheap car segment. Um, I think for, you know, for the price of this car, you really, really cannot go wrong with a Renault Clio 5 if you're sort of looking in this price bracket. I mean, the level of technology and the level of sort of interior build quality you get for your money these days at this price bracket is just, it's pretty crazy if you ask me, especially when you consider like how bad cars in this price bracket were 10 or 15 years ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm super, super happy with the car. Um, I'm just going to tell you a few things which I found, which I think are a little bit weird, a little bit odd, um, but none of them, in my opinion, are like deal breakers. I'm still really, really happy with the purchase and I'm glad I made it. But of course, I want to tell you everything and I want to give you the full picture. So that's, that's why I'm doing this video. I've even made a little post-it note here so I don't forget anything. Um, okay, first thing I, I think most people want to know is, so this car is the 1.3 turbo petrol EDC automatic with 130 horsepower. How much, how good is the fuel economy? How much fuel is it burning? So I am doing, in my 930 miles, say 1500 kilometers, um, I am doing an average of 53.1 miles per gallon, which is not bad, really, really not bad at all. I think that's actually pretty impressive for a petrol car like this. I'm doing, you know, the majority of my journeys are sort of short journeys to the supermarket. You know, it's locked down here in the UK, so I can't really go that far, um, but yeah. On my sort of my urban journeys, 53.1 miles per gallon. It's pretty good if you ask me, and I'm, I'm more than happy with that. And that's you know real world driving. That's not you know simulated. I'm not a you know, motoring journalist. I drive this thing. You know, it's actually quite a fast little car, so I, you know it's fun to drive. So I drive it and have fun. Um, so yeah, 53.1. Okay, let's talk about some things which I think are a little bit odd, a little bit weird. First thing which really stands out to me is the automatic gearbox. So the automatic gearbox in this car is absolutely fine once it's once the car is moving so once the car is going completely fine you know you're gonna you're not gonna notice anything wrong with the gearbox at all um you know i think everyone would be perfectly happy with it however when you start off so when you're moving away at low speeds say you're at a junction or you know if i was getting out of this parking space which i'm in now um the gearbox sort of acts really weirdly at low speed i would say um when you are moving away what you'll find you have to do if i can just sort of demonstrate you'll find you sort of apply some accelerator to move away and then sort of nothing will happen like the car won't move at all and you apply more and more accelerator and more and more accelerator and then suddenly the car will move like um sort of it, it, I, it's not very smooth and progressive it's quite lurchy i guess i'm not, not sure everyone knows that word but it's like you know it's quite sort of uh it's not very it's not very nice <laughs> the gearbox at low speed at high speed absolutely fine you'll not notice anything wrong with it at all but uh you know i've never i've never really had a car like this one where i've sort of i've been at a junction before you know where i'm moving away from some for, from some traffic lights say and then you know i'm applying some accelerator and i apply some accelerator and then suddenly i end up spinning the wheels like i apply so much accelerator that the wheels just spin out of nowhere um it's it's pretty weird actually um the gearbox on this car is is a little bit unusual 
but it only really happens at low speed. At high speed, perfectly fine. I've sort of also noticed here, you know, it's winter here in the UK, um, when the gearbox is really cold, so I guess when the oil inside the gearbox is very, very cold, the problem gets worse. When it's hot, it's absolutely fine. So if, if you've been driving the car and then you go to start it again at low speed, it's much better. But it's really when it's cold, it's, it's, it's worst. Um, I hope it sort of improves over time, to be honest. Okay, next thing which I think is a bit weird is the braking system. So this car, it doesn't have a radar sensor on it on the front, but it does have this city safe emergency braking system, which involves like some cameras up here in the back of the, in, in this sort of box on the windscreen. Um, what I've noticed is that if you let the windscreen get very dirty, so if you, you know, if you're a bit of a, if you don't look after your car that well, or maybe you're driving on the motorway and a load of sort of spray gets put onto your windscreen, what will happen is that suddenly the car will say emergency braking activated and a little sort of red banner will pop up on the screen here saying emergency braking, emergency braking. When there's no need to emergency brake, uh, you know, the car in front of you is miles away, um, it will, that will pop up and it will sort of say brake, brake, brake. And I'm pretty sure what's happening is that the, when the windscreen is dirty, the lens of the camera gets covered in, in dirt and it can't determine what's, you know, the distance of things in front of it. So it just ends up flashing up these warning messages. Um, it's sort of a bit annoying and slightly weirdly, it, the car doesn't actually apply the brakes. It more just, it just pops up this banner and says, brake, 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 but nothing really happens. Um, and then I end up just, you know, washing the windscreen with these buttons and then the problem just goes away straight away. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a bit odd. Um, maybe if the car had the radar sensor on it as well, then it would be able to actually know that there's nothing in front of it. But with just the cameras, sometimes it makes a mistake. But yeah, it's a pretty minor thing. It's happened like three times in the 900 miles. So not very often, but you know, something, to, something I wanted to mention. Okay, next thing. Um, I've had a couple of issues. I want to say maybe five times where my phone, so the Android Auto, which I'm using to power my, you know, my Google Maps or my Spotify or my podcast or whatever, um, where the sort of Android Auto will just disconnect randomly. To be honest, I think this is a really common issue with Android Auto and happens with loads of cars. Um, I don't really think it's the problem of the Renault. I think it might be a problem of my phone, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So I'm not going to blame the Renault for this. It has happened a few times. Um, and it's sort of, yeah, it disconnects in a bit of a weird way. Like it won't just stop working. It will, it will more happen where it will sort of like partially stop working. The maps might stay on for a bit longer. The music might stop. It's a bit weird. I end up just unplugging the cable and re-plugging the cable. And yeah, I have tried a few different cables. This one's just the one that's in here. I've tried a few different cables. It's not the cable. It is the car. Or it is the car or my phone. So um, so yeah, to be honest, I, I, I'm not sure that's the Renault. It could be my phone. So I'm not going to blame the Renault for that. But yeah, it's really easy just to unplug and replug and everything just pops back up exactly where you were. So it's not really a big, big stress. It just can be a little bit annoying if you're in the middle of like a junction where you're trying to figure out where to go. Okay. Um, so the next thing I want to touch on, um, I didn't mention this in the first video because I hadn't, meant, hadn't actually noticed it at the time, but the car has some lovely air vents here in the front, you know, as you'd expect, some pretty normal air vents. However, you'll notice they don't have any like slider or a little wheel on the side to, to sort of turn the airflow on and off. They're just on. So each one of these four vents is on all the time and you can't turn it off. Um, I mean, that might be a, a deal breaker for someone, Maybe if you, if you drive the car a lot by yourself, you might want to direct airflow from the passenger side onto the driver's side, which would be nice. But in this car, you can't do it. I guess it's a way to keep costs down, to be honest, and reduce the complexity of this mechanism. But whatever, you know, it's, it's a very, very minor thing. And to be honest, I never use those little wheels anyway. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not too bothered about it. Um, and then the final thing, the final thing that I've noticed with this car is there is there must be some sort of interior light sensor here so there's there's some sort of light sensor i don't know where it is to be honest maybe it's on the back of here or up maybe it's using the sensors in the in this box here um, but there's an interior light sensor which it looks at how bright it is outside and it will do things like turn up and down the brightness on this screen and and also this screen here for your for your speed of speedometer um, and it will switch the maps you know from daytime to nighttime mode when you're using the Renault navigation system, obviously the Android Auto or the Apple CarPlay comes from your mobile phone. Um, it's all fine, except I've noticed a few times the car makes a really bad decision based on what the light situation is outside. 
So say, for example, it's dark outside, you would want to have the, you know, you need to have some level of brightness on the screens here to be able to read them if it's dark, and the screens will be put at like minimum brightness. So you just can't see the speed and you can't see it, you can't see anything you're doing. I found that really annoying and to be honest, almost dangerous uh, when it happened the first time because I didn't know how to manually override the um, manually override the brightness. I was looking here in the menus trying to find out a way to manually turn up the brightness. I couldn't find it, um, but eventually I did find it and it's here. So this button here, you just click this up and down and that manually controls the brightness of these screens. I'm sure you can see that. I mean, that's like this. If you find that the system makes a bad decision about the, um, about the ambient light, you can just manually override it like this. Uh, you will find that the system will then try and manually override your manual override. It will like try and put it back to where it thinks in like 10 minutes time, but you can just manually override it again at that point. To be honest, this has only happened a few times, maybe like two or three times. It is a bit annoying um, and you know, potentially dangerous if you can't see your speed. However, um, yeah, you can just manually override it with these buttons here and it's, it's, sort of, it's no big deal. I do hope they sort of fix that in a software update, to be honest. Um, yeah, like in my opinion, the system shouldn't be entirely relying on the light sensor. It should be more relying on like time of day. So, um, yeah, battery's now in standby mode. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, like time of day, if it's, you know, if, if it knows it's 11 o'clock here, uh, in the day, then there should be some degree of brightness on the screen, right? Like, um, yeah. Anyway, that's, it's a pretty minor thing. And as long as you know that that's the button, everything is fine. So yeah, that concludes the, um, the Renault Clio 5 update. Overall, as I said, I'm super, super happy with the car. I think the car is fantastic for the money. I think what you get for your money is, is just really, really brilliant. Um, the car, yeah, overall, I'm super, super happy. I wish the gearbox was a tiny bit better at slow speed, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. And to be honest, I think the majority of people who'll be buying this car will probably have it with a manual gearbox as it's a sort of cheap car and having an automatic on a cheap car is a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has been update. This update's been, uh, been useful and let me know if you have any questions at all and I'll catch you in the next Renault Clio 5 segment. See you in a bit.